the devil also is empowering certain people with a form of not anointing, with a form of empowerment. And they go performing line wonders. Do you not fall for them? May I never fall for them. When a man who is operating under the influence of a whole evil spirit also wants to cut that evil spirit. And some are even in some so-called pulpits. They are not in any way connected with Jesus of Nazareth. They are junior devils and senior devil. I can imagine the devil inside that person who was twin cast out was a senior devil. But this exorcist was operating with a junior devil. And said, come on, who Jesus are you talking about? Someone said, Jesus, I know. Who said that? The devil. Even Paul, I know. You know, the word of God says where two or three are gathered in my name, I am there. And we know where God chooses to show up because he is faithful to his word. Our gathering here is unto him. And so we know him to be here. Hallelujah. And when God shows up, it's sweeter than honey, I tell you. Hallelujah. Somebody let's just enjoy his presence. Let's enjoy his manifest presence this morning. Come on. Let's just, come on, grace out Jesus. Let's all wave our hands together to him. Let's do it together to him. To the almighty God. To the only God. To the one and only God. Who deserve all the praise. Who deserve all the worship. He deserve all the honor. Come on, let's give him all the praise. Let's give him all the glory. Hallelujah. like you Lord in all the earth much less love and beauty and less worth nothing in this world can satisfy cause Jesus you're the cup that won't run dry your presence is heaven to me. Hallelujah. That's right. Your presence is heaven to me. Somebody help me lift your hand. Your voice is treasure of my heart. Say, treasure of my heart and of my soul. In my weakness, you are. In my weakness, you are merciful. He is the redeemer of my past and present. Redeemer of my past and present world. Oh, yes. Holder of my future days to come. Say your presence, your presence.
Hallelujah. Okay, let's read together. One, two, three, go. Go on. Now, God worked unusual miracles by the hands of Paul, so that even handkerchiefs or aprons were brought from his body to the sick, and the diseases left them, and the evil spirit went out of them. Then some of the itinerant Jews, exhausted, took it upon themselves to call the name of the Lord Jesus over those who had evil spirits, saying, We exorcise you by the Jesus whom Paul preaches. Also, there were seven sons of Sceva, a Jewish chief priest, who did so. And the evil spirit Jesus I know, and Paul I know, but who are you? Then the man in whom the evil spirit was lifted on them, overpowered them, and prevailed against them, so that they fled out of the house naked and wounded. Verse 17. This became known both to all Jews and Greeks dwelling in Ephesus, and fear fell on them all, and the name of the Lord Jesus was magnified. Praise the Lord. From this account, when we look at what is going on today, you will see that what happened then is nothing different from what is happening now. In the times of the Acts of the Apostles, there were those who took it upon themselves to begin to act as though they are followers of Jesus. And they also want to act in the name of Jesus. These people were called in this scripture, eh, it says in verse 13, then some of the itinerant Jewish exorcists. Who are they? Itinerant what? Jewish exorcists. Did what? Took it upon themselves to call the name of the Lord Jesus. Look at that. And who is an exorcist? What do you know about that, an exorcist? Huh? The cast of demons. <laughs> but an exorcist is not something to be known with a Christian. But they are also going to call on the name of the Lord Jesus over those who have evil spirit. An exorcist himself is operating under an evil influence. A man who is an exorcist is influenced by this evil spirit. When a man who is operating under the influence of the Holy Spirit, Evil spirit also wants to cut out evil spirit in the name of who? That was strange, isn't it? Just as today we have people, they are not in any way connected with Jesus of Nazareth. But they are also acting in the name of Jesus. But they are operating from a different spirit entirely. And some are even in some so-called pulpits. Some show up on our TVs. And that's why you need a discernment of the Holy Spirit to know the Jesus of the Bible. There are all kinds, all kinds of man-made Jesus today being projected in our time, just as it was in the Bible times. Go back to that scripture. It says there, then some of the itinerant Jewish Exorcists took it upon themselves to call the name of the Lord Jesus over those who are the evil spirit. But look at what they said. What did they say? We exorcise you by the Jesus whom Paul preaches. Hello. We are exorcising you by the Jesus, not the Jesus we know. They are impersonators. They are adulterators. We exercise you by the Jesus whom Paul preaches. Go to the next verse. And also, there were seven sons of Sceva, read on, a Jewish priest who did so. Look at that. There were a Jewish priest and seven sons of Sceva who are doing the same thing. Just like we have many of them doing the same thing today. 
But look at what happened in the next verse. And the evil spirit answered and said, Jesus, I know. Paul, I know. But who are you? Because in the hierarchy of the devils, in the, in the, in the, in the, in the kingdom of the darkness, devils have hierarchy. They have hierarchy. Just like you have in the, in, in the hierarchy of angels, God's angels, there are archangels. There are angels. Even in the kingdom of darkness, there are hierarchy. Now, these exorcists are operating at the level of some devils. But unfortunately, on this day, they're going to cast out devils operating in a man. And this devil is in another hierarchy. Because really, when, you ex when devils are being cast out, devils are bodiless things. They take on human bodies. This devil has taken over a human body. Now an exorcist Jew came and wanted to get that devil out. But suddenly, a voice came out of the man. And it was the voice of another devil challenging this exorcist. The evil spirit answered and said, you need to know that it was taking over the voice of the person. Because devils use this human voice to speak. Because the evil spirit will not answer and say if the evil spirit is not questioned. You know that you don't answer until you are what? Questioned. An exorcist acting in the name of Jesus whom Paul preaches was questioning this devil in the sight of a man. And this devil answered. Jesus, I know. Paul, I know. Who are you? Now, look at it now. If evil spirits will have a little brain to say, ah, wait, wait, I know this Jesus, even though we don't belong to him, because for information, the devil believes that Jesus is Lord, he trembles, he trembles but that doesn't make him saved. Do you know that? Oh, Jesus, the devil knows that Jesus Christ is Lord. He knows, but he trembles. Just like today, when another human being projecting themselves as followers of Jesus, are operating under an evil spirit, and they are terrorizing little devils inside people. And because they are another level. It seems as though they have power. People fall for them. But they are not acting in the name of Jesus of Nazareth, the one Paul preaches. But that's not even my problem. If the devil said, Jesus, I know, but a believer does not even know this Jesus. They know a kind of Jesus that's not the Jesus of the Bible. See how many people today we flock in and out of some of our churches? Genuine seekers? But which Jesus are we being presented? Is it the, the man-made Jesus? Even if it's not in churches, some individuals now also have their own image of a kind of Jesus. It's a serious time in which you live. And every individual believer must know for himself or herself the Jesus of the Bible. Say the Jesus of the Bible. Jesus. Not man-made projected Jesus. Not religious Jesus. But the Jesus of the Bible. And that's why you see many times you will call him Jesus of Nazareth. Our God anointed Jesus Christ of whom? God anointed Jesus Christ of Nazareth. He went about doing good. Let me say this to you. The devil also is empowering certain people with a form of not anointing, with a form of empowerment. 
And they go performing line wonders. May you not fall for them. Amen. May I never fall for them. Amen. It's important in this stage of your life and my life, not only to know the Jesus of the Bible, but stay with him. And the reason why you must know the Jesus of the Bible is because if you don't know the Jesus of the Bible and you embrace the Jesus, which is an imagination of your own kind of Jesus or man presented Jesus, you will act with contempt. You will act with a mindset of a familiarity. And I know Jesus said, we don't say with our mouth, but something, our attitude towards what he says is that we, it's almost like it's your party, it's your friend, it's your body. No! It was God that became man. Yes, he called us his friend, but he's God. Yes, yes, he came as a lamb of God, but he's a lion. Of the tribe of Judah. He's a lamb. But today, he's no longer a lamb. He came as a lamb, died on the cross, shed his blood. But he's not coming back as a lamb. He's coming as a lion of the tribe of Judah. He came. But listen to me. Who is this Jesus? It wasn't just Jesus that just showed up in the, Old, in the New Testament. He was in the beginning. He was slain before the foundation of the earth. Before he went to the cross, he died before he went to the cross. He was slain in God's arrangement, in God's eternity, in God's sovereignty. A new man was seen. And his son was slain before the foundation. He knew. Because I'm finding, and it's... <laughs> It made me cringe many times when I see many believers' attitude towards Christian life nowadays. It's like we're doing God a favor by being saved. We're doing God a favor by going to church. We're doing God a favor by serving God. Ah! Doing who favor? It's because of the, the deception of the devil to make the church think is another kind of a Jesus that they have been made to be known, known to them by their bishop or by their pastors who doesn't even know him. But you know him by revelation. Amen. This devil inside a man woke up when this exorcist came and said, I command, I adjure you to come out in the name of Jesus. Paul preached. That devil said, hold on. Even as an adage in my country, even when you are crying, you can still see. <laughs> Suddenly that devil woke up and said, who are you talking to? Because devils also have senior. They are junior devils and senior devil. I can imagine the devil inside that person who was twin cast out was a senior devil. But this exorcist was operating with a junior devil. And said, come on, who Jesus are you talking about? <laughs> Come on, give God praise. Someone said, Jesus, I know. Who said that? The devil. The devil said, Jesus, I know. Even Paul, I know. When was the last time the devil said, I know Eunice. I can't come near her. I know, Je I know her then. The devils must not only be afraid of Jesus, but afraid of the Jesus in your life. See how many people today in the church are so afraid of devils because they don't have a revelation of Jesus. They don't know him. So we have been presented a kind of Jesus that makes the believers be like jelly wobbles. So those believers, they can't even breed until they go and see their prophets. They can't do nothing with their wife until their prophet give them a go-ahead. Wow. Someone say, not here. not here. 
you will know Jesus by yourself. You must know about the Jesus of the Bible. Oh, I fuck a babado shikaya. Pray in the Holy Ghost for a few minutes. Lekla bahaya. Shogomanda laya hai. Oh, Rabba Gandhi here. Yedera bohoya. For as I live, see the Lord, the knowledge of my glory will cover the earth as the water covers the sea. In the name of Jesus. Said Jesus, the Jesus of the Bible. Number one, he was born of a virgin. He was born of a virgin. And the virgin's name was Mary. But listen to me. Mary that was a virgin was not a saint. We live in a world today that there are places now they even watch you marry Mother Jesus, not the Jesus of the Bible. Mary was a virgin, but she was not a saint. She was just like any other. Don't you have virgins today? That's why Mary said, I just found favor in his sight. I was not extra special. That's for another day. But let it be known to you. Yes, he was born of a virgin. But he came through a woman who was not a saint but was a sinner. Why? Because the Son of God has to become a son of man to save the sons of men. I said the Son of God. He had to become what? Son of man. He identified with humanity. That's why he came through a human being who was not a saint but was a virgin. The real reason for the virginity was because God had to take on a body that I never had any sexual intercourse. Because for every sexual intercourse, there is a deposit of the other carrier. But she never had a sexual intercourse with a man. Her womb became the place where flesh the word became flesh the word was not flesh but the word became flesh to save the fleshy people thank you so much for joining me in today's broadcast i truly believe that you've been encouraged you've been inspired and you've been challenged all the comments that have been coming uh, back has been very encouraging to me personally thank you for those ticks and likes on the social media uh, it goes a long way in encouraging us to keep on doing what God has called us to do. Now, for the benefit of those who have not made the most important decision of their life with regards to answering this one question, what will happen when I die? I want to encourage you this day to give your life to Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. And it's very simple. A, acknowledge that you're a sinner. B, believe that Jesus died for your sin. And C, confess him as your Lord and Savior. Ephesians 2 from verse 8 to 9 says, For by grace you have been saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. It says, It's not of works, lest any man should boast. It is the gift of God. You can do the same thing I did as a 12-year-old boy many years ago when I gave my life to Christ. And all I had to do was do exactly what the Word of God says in Romans chapter 10 from verse 9 to 10, that if thou wilt confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus, and you believe in your heart, that Jesus Christ died for your sin, he says you will be saved. For with the mouth, a confession is made unto salvation, and with the heart, one believes unto righteousness. Now say this prayer with me. Lord Jesus, I acknowledge I am a sinner. Save me. So I confess you with my mouth, that you are my Lord, and you are my Savior. I believe in my heart that Jesus died for my sin. He was buried. But on the third day, God raised him from the dead. Therefore, I am saved. You know, as simple as this prayer may sound, if you prayed it from your heart, God heard you and you are saved. So I congratulate you for becoming a born-again Christian from today. I'll be more than happy to encourage you in this work if you email me or send me a message and I'll be able to get back to you. And the next time when I come back through the social media, you keep on winning. 
because God is on your side and you are destined to win. God bless you. Dear friend, I'm so thrilled to know that you've been blessed by all the materials I've been sharing on the social media platform. Why don't you take a step further by going to our YouTube channel to subscribe and also press the notification button so that you'll be among the first to be notified of all the other great messages and great materials that will be a blessing to you. Thank you for being part of the story. God bless you.